Howdy! What's up everyone? My name is Marina Bruno and today I'm going to talk about how to write dialogue for film scripts. that like I'm a pro writer or I know any better than you but rather I'm just gonna share with you some of my techniques and tips that I use for writing screenplays and everything because I do get a lot of questions from you guys asking me about how I write my short film scripts and everything so I thought I'd share with you guys some dialogue techniques for what I use when writing my own short film scripts so I'm actually a filmmaker myself and I've written directed produced and edited over 15 short films and a feature film and they've actually been screened in film festivals all around the world and people really seem to enjoy my short films so far my production company is called Wondering Pictures and that's the name of my main YouTube channel where I put all of my short films. If you want to watch one of my short films before actually watching this video, just so you get a sense of what kind of writer I am, pause this video, go to my main channel, watch one of those films, and then come back and then we can continue the video. Oh, no worries, I'll wait. Oh, you're back? Okay, cool. Which short film did you end up watching? Let me know in the comments below and tell me what you thought about the writing. Okay, so let's get started, guys. So my tip number one for writing dialogue is avoid being too direct in your dialogue. So what I mean by this is, let's just say you're trying to communicate an idea or a theme in the scene. Instead of making your character say what you want the audience to know, try not making the character say directly, but instead show the audience what you're trying to communicate through the scene itself. For for example, let's just say your main character is super stressed because they're suspicious that their spouse is cheating on them. A super easy way to portray this through dialogue would be to simply have your character call up a friend and be like, yo Stacy, you know what? Something's been on my mind. I think John is having an affair and I really don't know what to do about it. And then their friend just gives them like cheesy advice like, be strong Karen, you got this. You know what I mean? So to me, this is like super cheesy and cliche writing. So instead, maybe an indirect way to portray your character's anxiety would be to, let's just say, have a scene with them having a conversation with their spouse and their spouse is just talking about this cool movie they saw and it has nothing to do with the affair or anything like that. He has no idea that she's suspicious. So he's just going about his conversation, happy as ever because he just saw a dope movie. And let's just say your main character, while he He's talking to her, she's making a smoothie or something, and then she's stressing out because the berries are expired or something like that. So then she takes out her anger on him because he's the one who bought the berries and he forgot to put it in the fridge. So she's showing her anger and her anxiety through something else because she doesn't want to confront him directly because she's so ashamed, so she doesn't know what to do with her emotions. So instead she's using this as an excuse to get mad at him, but she can't actually tell him why she's mad at him. You know what I mean? Like something like that. So in the scene, the dialogue would be her complaining about the blueberries, but the audience knows that it means something else. But she's not telling the audience because people lie all the time, right? No one speaks the truth. And I find in movies and series and stuff like that, the way the writing is, is that the characters just say what they're thinking. But in real life, no one says everything because there's so many filters blocking what we want to say. Like one filter could be shame. Another filter could be fear in losing the person, you know what I mean? Another layer could be denial. So you go through all of these filters and then what comes out on the other end could be something completely irrelevant to what the character and what the scene is actually trying to communicate. Uh, you know how they say like 90% of communication is body language or something? Words are so hard to use to communicate because you know when someone says, oh, words can't describe the beauty of the, that sunset. Words are so dumb. So don't rely on words to communicate in dialogue. I hope that makes sense, but it's all about the energy behind your writing, you know? Don't use your head too much, use your heart. Talk is cheap, bro. Talk is cheap. And yes, I'm gonna say that in a, in a video talking about writing dialogue. I'm gonna say that talk is cheap. Personally, I don't like talking. I'm the type of person that's introverted. I like being in my head. I don't, I, the reason why I talk in these videos is because, you know, YouTube is for talking to the camera. But in real life, I express myself through, through feeling or I understand emotion and energy, not words. I never listen to words. Someone could be talking at me and I'll like zone out but I still feel what they're saying. That might be weird, but yo, that's how I write, bro. That's how I write. 
I hope this is making sense for you guys. I feel like you should never give too much attention to the words in dialogue, but instead use it as a way to create characteristics in your character. I'll get back to that in my tip number two. An example of a writer who's very direct in their dialogue is Woody Allen. His characters literally just say exactly what he wants the audience to know. This town of La Belle Epoque is the greatest, most beautiful era Paris has ever known. Yeah, but what about what about the twenties and the and the and the Charleston and the Fitzgeralds and the Hemingways? I mean, I, I love those guys. Well, it's the present. It, it's dull. Dull? I was trying to escape my present the same way you're trying to escape yours to a golden age. Surely you don't think the twenties are a golden age. The theme of this film is living in the past and feeling nostalgic and his character is literally just talking about living in the past. An example of a director that does the complete opposite, whose dialogue literally has nothing to do with what he's trying to tell his audience, is of course, can you take a wild guess, Quentin Tarantino. And in Paris, you can buy a beer at McDonald's. And you know what they call a, a, a quarter pounder with cheese uh, in Paris? They don't call it a quarter pounder with cheese? Oh man, they got the metric system. They wouldn't know what the fuck a quarter pounder is. And what do they call it? They call it the uh, Royale with cheese. Royale with cheese. That's right. What do they call a Big Mac? Big Mac's a Big Mac, but they call it Love Big Mac. The theme in this scene is showing the humanity and even the most evil characters. But his characters are just talking about hamburgers. You see what I mean? Obviously the audience knows that the director isn't super passionate about hamburgers, but they're understanding a deeper idea and a deeper meaning with the whole entire scene itself. So obviously everyone has their own writing style. I'm not saying that one is better than the other, but these are just two big differences that I noticed and I thought I should point out. But yeah, I've been finding the d direct way of writing so much in TV shows and I just find it so cheesy and I always point it out. I don't know, maybe I broke my own rules. I might be like a total hypocrite. You be the judge of that. Check out my film. I don't know. So, going on to my tip number two for writing dialogues in film. Use dialogue as an element to create character. The whole personality of the character can communicate so much more emotion and so much more feeling to your audience and they will connect on a much deeper, deeper level. It's also a way to create authenticity for your character. So, like, for instance, the way your character talks. So they could be talkative, super shy, super quiet. Do they swear a lot if they're tough gangsters? Are they extremely proper and polite? You get the idea. You should always have your character talk and say things that make them them. Even if it's a line that's random and it doesn't really have to do with anything. You know, little things, like it doesn't have to be perfect dialogue. It could literally be, you know, them just talking to themselves while they're mopping the floor. So as long as it flows naturally and brings your character to life. I, ho I hope I'm communicating these ideas properly. I'm sorry, I'm really bad with words, so. So my tip number three for writing dialogue, instead of studying dialogue in film, study the way people talk in real life. Listen to regular everyday conversation. Listen to the way shy people talk, how loud people talk, how two strangers are overly nice to each other when they meet for the first time and they're acquaintances, you know, that type of awkward talk because you don't really know that person yet so you're trying to be as nice as you can and they're also doing the same and it's totally fake, you know that type of dialogue? So it's just kind of like this neutral ground that everyone's and then once you start to get to know somebody then the layers start coming down and then you start being more real so that's another type of dialogue you know the way two best friends or two really close people talk to each other they might have their own form of communication they might even have their own language anyways life is a movie so watch and pay attention carefully because it is the best story unfolding before us so my tip number four for writing dialogue I'm literally gonna break my tip number three right now and I'm I'm gonna recommend some amazing, well, some of my favorite films and TV shows that have some of the best writing and dialogue in general. So number one, The Office. I am obsessed with this show. I have literally rewatched like every episode. I think I've seen every episode like more than three times. Every single episode, and I keep rewatching. I have it on repeat on Netflix. The more I watch it, the more I realize how genius it is. It is the best 
writing. And then I had someone tell me that I told them to watch The Office, and then they're like, no, I don't, uh, I'm more into like complex type. That's more like simple. So like they were kind of like unimpressed. Like how is that genius writing if it's such a, if it's such a basic, simple storyline? That is something I totally disagree with. I think that the simple things are the most genius because that show is about a paper company, but it talks about being a human and doing something that is unfulfilling. Oh my God, I, don't, I can't even, like words can't even describe how genius that show is. Okay, enough fanning off about The Office. I'm just gonna move on quickly. Um, next is Pulp Fiction, obviously. This film is super great because of the, the way the dialogue is and I'm pretty sure if, if you're a filmmaker, like a film buff or a writer, you've obviously seen this film and you've obviously obsessed over it. Uh, Birdman. This is one of my all-time favorite movies and although the dialogue in this film is pretty direct, still as a film, as an overall piece of art, I think it's amazing. Like for instance, the scene when he, when he goes on stage and in the play, he takes out a gun and he's in character right now, so they're delivering the lines of a play, so it's not even real, it's not even the dialogue from the movie, it's like, in the movie they're saying dialogue. So there's like a, a fakeness and a cheesiness to that dialogue, and then the cheesiness gives it an ironic feeling, because he talks about not being loved. He says, oh, well then I guess I should just commit suicide. Bang, and he, he kills himself and then the audience claps, you know? But even though they're giving a play, you could tell that like, that's showing some truth beneath the character. He's desperate for attention and to be loved. Taking his own life will give him that love that he wanted. You know, it's like, oh, it's so good. Pineapple Express, I think this movie is just so funny and it's so perfect and it's just like a seamless story. Nightcrawler, this movie is one of my favorites. This movie is a perfect example of showing indirect dialogue that really shows the characteristics of the main character. He talks a lot and he babbles on about like little details and he's such like a crazy guy but he's a genius and stuff so everything he says, a lot of his dialogue is mainly to portray his character. Um, I don't know if I can really remember any more films or TV series right now that I'm obsessed with. Those are the ones I can remember for now. I'm Marina and those were some of my tips for writing dialogue in film. I hope it was useful and it gave you sort of a different perspective on the art of storytelling. What are some of your tips for writing dialogue? Let us know in the comments below and we can have a conversation. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Smash that thumbs up button, guys. Come on, do it, do it. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel for new videos every week. I'm always posting behind the scenes videos, filmmaking tips, screenwriting tips, and also be sure to subscribe to my main YouTube channel where there you can find all of my short films and my narrative projects. I'm actually here in Los Angeles right now and I'm gonna be working on a lot of new short films and content for you guys. So this YouTube channel is my second one. That one is my main one. So if you really, if you're a true film geek, go watch one of my films. Oh, and guys, I also have a merch store so if you want to be a film geek you could get a sweater or a t-shirt or like a mug or something with the with the logo on it that is also a huge 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 help for supporting this channel and guys if you want to be a film geek get a sweater take a picture of it post on instagram tag me and use the hashtag film geek and i will give you a shout out guaranteed on my instagram story so it's guaranteed it's not like you might win a shout out or something if you do take a picture post it whatever i will shout you out how is that Alright guys, thanks again. I hope you had fun and I'm gonna stop talking now and I'm gonna go make some movies. Catch you later.